Good morning, hello everyone. Welcome to my channel, Just Kelly, and I am Kelly. Um, I am doing a little whip and chat here today on um, my um, piece of Trinity by William Hallmark. It is um, from Diamond Art Club, and I'm actually making some progress on it. So I thought I would just work on this a little bit while um, we do a little jibber jabber. So if you're returning, welcome. Welcome back. I so appreciate your continued support. And if you're brand new, welcome, welcome, welcome. Everyone is welcome here. Please be sure to hit that subscribe, that like, and ring my bell. Ring my bell. Okay, so one thing before I get started, I wanted to just show you something. Um, I've gotten some people asking, you know, about my um, uh, journaling and how I... Um, do art in my um, Bible. So um, I just thought, one second, I would just show what I've done when I didn't have the internet to come on. Um, so I uh, was working, uh, reading in Psalms. Um, well, I guess I should have marked it. Ugh. Um, maybe is this it? Hmm. No, it wasn't this far back into Psalms. It, I think it was around... I should have marked this. Um, this is an inspired Bible. It's a new um, living translation. So it has a lot of illustrations that you can color and stuff. Um, but I also, I do a lot of freehand in here. And this is the uh, one that is called Prayer. I am in Psalms, right? Why can't I find it? Usually it kind of just... I thought it was close to one of my tippins. My vellum tippins. But I have this one. And then... Um, so I did this little art here, uh, right here, and it is, um, some arrows, some feathers, um, and it goes along with this verse, um, Psalms 127, 3 through 5, and it says, children are a gift from the Lord. They are 
a reward from him. Children born to a young man are like arrows in a warrior's hand. How joyful is the man whose quiver is full of them. He will not be put to shame. Then he confronts his accusers. When he confronts his accusers at the city gate. So on this, I just drew four arrows um, representing my four children. And I did a banner and put their names on the banner, put their uh, initials on the arrows. Um, and um, I just, you know, freestyled um, this on here. I used highlighters because I didn't want to cover up the... Uh, I still wanted to be able to read the words underneath. So this is one, and then over here I wrote a little um, prayer that uh, goes along with this verse. So that's one of the things that I do in my Bible journaling. Oh, this thing is heavy. Um, but I do coloring. I... I uh, use pencils and um, highlighters and sometimes I'll use um, um, some certain ink pens that are Bible friendly. Um, I will use them as well so that they don't leak through. But anyways, I thought since I had just done that in... Um, in my Bible about arrows, I thought I would, we would talk about arrows and, um, there, there are like 10 different types of arrows mentioned in the Bible. And I found it very, very interesting. And, um, so I just thought I would share that um, as a diamond paint. So the first one, the first type of arrow um, that we see in the Bible is the arrow of judgment. And this um, symbolizes divine re retribution upon the wicked. Um, so when the scripture speaks of arrows of judgment, it is portraying the consequences and disobedience that um, sin has on our lives. Um, and so we can see this arrow spoken about um, in Psalm 7, um, 12, and 13. And it says, if he does not relent, He will sharpen his sword, and he will bend and string his bow. He will prepare his deadly weapons and shoot his flaming arrows. So th these arrows are, you know, mainly a warning against wrongdoing and illustrating the... Uh, severity of divine judgment. Um, it underscores the importance of righteous living and the accountability of individuals have based on their own actions. Um, it rem it is a reminder that every choice has consequences 
and the path of righteousness is one to pers be pursued earnestly. So that is our first arrow. Um, the second one is arrows of the enemy. Hi, Mango. Hi, Mango, buddy. Um, so, arrows of the enemy are recur are recurring throughout the Bible, and it represents instruments of where warfare and destruction uh, yielded by our adversaries our enemies Ephesians 6:16 6, is a great example of this it urges believers to take up the shield of faith to extinguish the flaming arrows of the evil one. Um, and it also um, brings to mind that our battle is against, you know, spirits and principalities and um, in the spiritual realm. So it highlights the ongoing spiritual battle um, that we are faced with as Christians. And the necessary um, diligence against the schemes of um, are the you know the evil ones and emphasizes us to continually be prepared spiritually and steadfast in our faith so that is a lot right there. It brings several, several script scriptures uh, to my mind. One being the women with the lamps um, having being prepared. Um, uh, the one that I already mentioned that we fight not against, you know, human beings, but against uh, evil forces uh, that we can't see that may be controlling certain people. Um, so they all just tie back uh, to this. And you can find many, many, many more um, scriptures if you did a study I think there's like oh I don't know 30 40 times arrows are um, found in the Bible that talk about you know these different arrows um, so then our next one is arrows of deliverance Um, now, these arrows are very unique in that these arrows symbolize God's intervention to rescue his people from danger and oppression. It's just they're waiting, ready to do battle for you. Um, and we can see this in Psalms 18, 14, uh, which paints a very, very vivid picture on this. Um, 
and it says, He shot his arrows and scattered the enemy. With great bolts of lightning, he routed them. Wow. Our God is an awesome God. Um, these, uh, again, these arrows demonstrate God's power to save. Um, God's um, power to protect. Those who trust in him. So there is a condition on this, and that is trusting in God, putting your faith in God. Um, they also serve as a reminder of God's faithfulness. Provision in times of trouble in giving us the hope and confidence in his ability to deliver from, you know, difficult situations. And you know what amazes me? Nothing is too small. I mean, you think of the big stuff, and God comes through on the big stuff. But, you know, he also cares. He cares about every single aspect. Even the little things. Even the very smallest detail that might seem very minute to you, um, it's not to him. I should be doing these in checkerboard. I don't know why I'm not. Um, okay, so I think we're going on to our fourth type of arrow which are arrows of words. So these, of course, impact our spoken language. They can either build up or tear down. And we can see this in Proverbs 25, 18 where we are warned like a club or a sword or a sharp arrow is one who gives false testimony against a neighbor. So this really underscores the importance of speaking the truth. We all know that um, there's no place in heaven for liars. This is a big, big thing against uh, God does not like liars. Um, and using words wisely using words wisely. Of course, it highlights our responsibility. Mm, get in there. Our res um, hang on. Come on, guys. My cats are so destructive. So, so destructive. Um, all right, let me get back to <laughs> what 
I was talking about. Oh, I get sometimes I get so, so frustrated because I'll do a thorough cleaning and have everything so very, very nice. And it only takes them moments to completely destroy it. And I get so, so frustrated that I can't keep anything tidy or clean for not even 10 minutes. Um, I know it's not going to last forever that, you know, they're going to grow up and they're not going to be as clumsy. Um... But like in my last video, I three broken or two broken pins, one with a broken um, multi placer um, that I have to get out. Um, anyways, I digress. Let me get back. What were we talking about? Oh yes, um, arrows of words. Um, so we talked about speaking truth and our responsibility um, that we have in our communication with others, right? Emphasizing, emphasizing um, honesty. And here's the hard part, for, I, I mean for me. The hard part for me. Okay, no, no. No, Mango, stop it. All right, let me see if I can fix this, get you guys back into frame. Um. So not only speaking the truth, but using words wisely and in kindness, honesty and kindness, because it's, at least for me, um, I mean, you can just, you know, blurt out the truth. And truth is truth, right? Um, <sighs> Chloe, please, come on, guys. Sorry, you can see I'm getting very, very frustrated. I'm losing my thought. I'm trying to stay on task. And keep my thoughts, because um, I've noticed in some of my videos, I'll be talking about one thing, and then I skip to another, and I never get back to what I was talking about prior, and it's all because of these distractions with these little ones. Um, anyways... For me, it's been a struggle. Um, putting the... Adding fluff to the truth. That's what I call adding fluff to the truth. In other words, being able to say what the truth is in a kind way that isn't... Um, that doesn't condemn um, because that's not our place, right? That it doesn't condemn. Um, and not that you wouldn't not tell the full, the whole truth or not that you would leave anything out to, you know, make it all buttery and fluffy. Oh, come on. But 
that you would do it in a way um, sometimes that I was going to say offensive, but you know, sometimes offense can be that one thing that makes somebody stop and think. Anyways, I, maybe I'm having such a difficult time talking about it because it's the one thing that I do struggle with. I mean, it's very easy just to say the truth matter-of-factly, especially um, uh, somebody who's been trained in the medical field. We are trained to leave out everything and just speak facts. Um, but there is a kind way of doing it without distorting God's word. So kindness, integrity, honesty, arrows of words. Okay, so our fifth one is, of course, Arrows of Prayer. Um, and these arrows symbolize our communication with God, right? So Psalm 64, 1 is a very good example of this. Where it says, hear me, O Hear me, my God, as I voice my complaint. Protect my life from the threat of the enemy. It's like one of those prayers. Oh, God, help me. Help. <laughs> it's a 911 arrow, right? That's how I look at this, Arrows of Prayer. Um, it serves, prayer serves as a very powerful tool for seeking God's guidance, provision, protection in times of need. For me, that's an everyday basis I need. Every single day. Oh. <laughs> it emphasizes the reliance that we have on God for our spiritual and physical well being. Um, it emphasizes. Intimate connection between the Creator and His creation. We are told we are to continually pray nonstop about everything. I don't know, you guys might think I'm a little weird, and, and maybe I am. But, um, you know, I just <sighs> talk to God ongoing. I... Well, about these cats that are driving me nuts today um, after I spent all morning cleaning and when I get done with this video obviously I have to go back and re-clean 
And how long will it last? I can't stand things. If I don't clean, then it gets too overwhelming. It's because there's stuff there. So, you know. <laughs> I have you guys. I have God. I talk to them. I talk to you all about these frustrations I have. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, our next one. Let's move on. We can go down a rabbit hole with that one, can't we? <laughs> oh, crazy, right? <laughs> um, now, the next one is um, Arrows of Guidance. Our Guidance Arrows. And these represent a uh, direction of direction and leading, leading in our lives of where we should go, how we should, you know, what we should be doing. And this, a good example that I found in this is in. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your paths straight. That is our arrow of guidance. I wish I would have checkerboard this. I did down here. I don't know why I didn't with um, this symbol. I just, I maybe I thought I didn't think I had, you know, so many. But obviously, I hope it's not going to look too crooked when um, I combine the two. Anyways, um, so arrows of guidance. Um, of course, these arrows signify God's guidance and wisdom as he directs our steps in life. Um, they remind us to trust in God's providence and seek his will in all aspects, all aspects of life. Big, small, in between, all aspects. Of life. So that really kind of ties in to um, arrows of prayer. Right? Okay, um, let's move along, because I don't know how long we've been going, but I do want to make sure I'm able to upload this. Um, so then we have Arrows of Anguish and Sorrow. And, of course, this um, represents suffering, pain, emotional pain, emotional suffering. And we can see this um, very well in Psalms 38, 2. It says, your arrows have pierced me and your hand has come down upon me. Um, these arrows symbolize our trials and tribulations of life that really highlight um, the reality of human suffering and the need for comfort and um, consolation in times of distress. 
We need our comforter. We need that, we're just humans. We need continual validation from him that his plans for us are for good. And this is a season. Whether you're in a season of desert, or you're walking around in the desert, or you're in a season of abundance, and prosperity or you're in a season of change and growth you need we all need God in all these different circumstances in all these circumstances There's not any circumstance that um, we cannot rely, that we can't, can't, cannot <laughs> rely on him. Okay, number eight is Arrows of Wisdom. Now, arrows of wisdom, of course, represent the pursuit of divine knowledge and understanding, right? So we have Proverbs um, 9.10, which says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. As you spend time with God and spend time in His Word, you might have read, you know, a verse a hundred times before, and then all of a sudden, you read it again. And God opens the realms and lets you see it in a whole new light. That is wisdom and understanding. These, these arrows um, represent the importance of seeking wisdom from God and applying it to our daily lives. Now, the neat thing about wisdom, a lot of God's um, stuff comes with conditions. If you trust in him, if you love him, if you this or if you that, but wisdom is given freely to anyone who asks. All you have to do is ask for it and it's given freely. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to trust in God. You don't have to believe in Him. This comes into play if someone is maybe wanting to know if there is a God they can ask God for wisdom. Anything. This is given freely. Wisdom is given freely by God. Um, it also really underscores um, another aspect, and that's discernment and sound judgment in facing um, our life's challenges. We all have different challenges. Some of us the same challenges. I mean, they come 
You know, our life is filled with challenges, decisions. Um, and we want to make sure that we're making sound judgments. And we're making judgments that are in accordance to God's plan for our lives. And then number nine, I, I did say there's ten arrows, right? Ten arrows. Um, so the ninth arrow is arrows of justice. And these arrows um, symbolize the righteous judgment and fairness of God. And again, Psalms uh, 711 uh, says, God is a righteous judge, a God who displays his wrath every day. Ooh, that's kind of scary. We've seen God's wrath a lot in Old Testament. But this says he shows it every day. Well, I'm not exactly sure I understand that. But these arrows remind us of God's commitment to justice. They underscore accountability. Before a just and righteous God. I think I'm going over my, <laughs> my mark here. Um, okay, the last one. And this is arrows of folly and destruction. And these symbolize consequences of foolishness and rebellion against God. Um, Proverbs 26. 18 and 19 warns us like a maniac shooting flaming arrows of death is one who deceives their neighbor and says I was only joking it's just a joke whoo um these Arrows symbolize our self-destructive nature of sin and the folly of rejecting God's wisdom. It's a cautionary reminder of the destructive path that awaits those who disregard God's commands. When I think of this, I'm always it always brings me back to um, oh, what was the name of that book? Um, oh, where there's it goes along the um, God's path, the narrow path. Um, oh, what was the name of that? It always reminds me of that. You don't want to veer off. All kinds of bad things can await you if you veer off the narrow path. Always remembering that this place that we live in That it's not our true home. It's just a stopping ground, a very short stopping ground.
Anyways, I found it, this really interesting that these 10 arrows takes us from judgment to deliverance, from words of prayer to the type of arrows that reflect different aspects of our relationship with God and the world around us. And as we reflect on these symbols, May we all be encouraged to seek righteousness, trust in God's guidance, and embrace wisdom in our lives. Let us also remember the importance of justice, the reality of suffering, and the consequences of our folly. And through it all, may we all find the hope, solace, and unchanging promises of God's Word. Well, that's my whip and chat. I will, um, uh, this is, um, Okay, so uh, if you can see this, I have from, I have the dove completely done, and then this one third, all this dark, dark brown that took me forever to get through. And then I have this side almost done. So like I did this and then went up, you know, moved it around like this. And I'm working in this area, uh, this cornered area right in here. So that's where I am in um, my Trinity of Peace. So until next time, my friends, thank you for watching. Um, I was trying to come up with something else to talk about other than my kitties, who oh, I'm not very happy with today that have been just driving me crazy. Um, so, um, I don't want you to think that I'm preaching or anything or teaching because that's not that's not me that's not um, not been called to either of that this is just some things that I have um, looked into um, gone down different, you know, rabbit holes. I started out um, um, I started out um, with that about children being, you know, being blessed and children being arrows. Um, anyways, if you did a study, arrows are all throughout the whole Bible. There's arrows that fly by day and how to scatter them. There are, um, like seven main arrows, um, that I haven't started looking into, but there's types of evil arrows and um, um, prophetic meaning of arrows and shooting arrows and the types of spiritual arrows and um, there's just all kinds of um, information 
on arrows, flaming arrows, golden arrows, evil arrows, <laughs> Lord's arrows. Um, seventy-seven. There are seventy-seven evil air arrows. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I, I mean, you could just take this one word, arrows, and who we. Mm. Um, yeah, I don't even know how many. Uh, let's see. Um, Like 37 Bible verses about arrows. Forty three passages about arrows. So arrows sixty five instances where arrows are in the Bible. <laughs> so they are all throughout. So it is, I mean, this could take you um, a long time to go through all of them and um, dissect them. And, and um, that was just a little tidbit of where I have started in my arrow research. <laughs> so I hope you found it interesting as I did. Um, so until next time, my friends, thank you so much for stopping by. I really, really appreciate you giving up your time to um, watch or listen to me. And um, until next time, my friends, take care. God bless. Bye-bye now.